afternoon, everyone. Happy Friday and welcome to the last day of our library week 2020 from afar, my virtual library. That's what I'm calling it uh, during our staycation. Um, and I'm so happy to see you today. I hope you've enjoyed all the activities we've been doing this week. Hopefully you follow us on Instagram now or maybe on our Facebook page um, where I've been posting a lot more there um, because I really want to be connected and interacting with you guys, okay? You, your parents, everybody um, who would like to join is more than welcome and every time, okay? Anytime, every time, you know how we roll. Um, so today I decided as part of our theme of the great outdoors and camping to focus on stars and constellations in the night sky, right? Um, one of my favorite things to do um, in the city, but especially when I go outside of the city to camp or hang out with maybe a friend who lives up on a mountain, um, you know who you are. Um, I love being outside at night and just stargazing. It's one of my favorite things to do, just looking up at the stars and seeing all the constellations. And if you don't know what a constellation is, it is a grouping of stars that make a certain pattern. And we're gonna learn more about it in today's book. Um, so let's let's just go ahead and get started. Do you guys like, uh, do you like looking at the stars at night? Uh, do you maybe sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? star maybe all right and so uh, with that we are going to read um, a book from our library in the planet section in that 520 section that I mentioned yesterday um, or maybe it was the day before I think it was the day before with Earth Day anyway um, it's called glow in the dark constellations a field guide for young stargazers maybe like you uh, by C.E. Thompson and illustrated by Randy tuning that's an interesting last name i've never read that before anywho um so this book is a non-fiction book so it's full of awesome facts right so as part of that i'm actually not going to read the whole book i am going to read bits and pieces of it um to show you the constellations that we can find in the in the night sky right now and then the ones that are coming up for um, may and june okay so that's what we're going to read today and of course you can always check this out when we get back to pile um one to read the whole book and two to see if it actually glows in the dark maybe i'll look later after the lights go out you know after the sun goes down i can see if it actually does glow in the dark so um with that Let's go ahead and get started. For story time, I need watching eyes, listening ears, calm bodies, breathe in, breathe out. And of course, no nose picking, no finger licking. We need to have clean hands to touch our books. Here we go, friends. So when we say it's nonfiction, does that mean it's the real stuff or the made up stuff? If you said the real stuff, you are 100% right. Nonfiction is real, people. Fiction is made up from your head, okay? It's a story um, that is not based on true things. Well, not all the time, but most of the time. All right, so here we go. Glow in the Dark Constellations, a field guide for young stargazers. Here we go. So this book starts with what you'll see in the sky during seasons of the year. So seasons are when our weather changes, of course. Can you see the seasons with me? Let's see if you can, here we go. This season that we're currently in is spring. Then what comes next? Summer, right? What comes after that? Autumn or fall, right? And then what's the last one? What's number four? Winter, of course, when it's super cold, which is the season we just left to come into spring, right? So at the beginning of this book, it shows you the constellations you can see in the winter sky when you face the north and the south, and the same thing in the spring sky. And this is where we are. This is what we're going to focus on for today's activities, okay? All right, so here we go. All right, so... There's a lot of words on this page, but we're going to read it. Here we go. An introduction to stargazing. And if you look up into the sky on a clear night, you will be able to see glowing planets and twinkling stars. On some nights, you will see the moon. And if you're lucky, you may see a meteor or shooting star as it scoots across the sky. You will be able to see more if you use a telescope or a pair of binoculars. But even with just your own eyes, there's plenty to see in the night sky. This book will show you how to find several well-known groups of stars or constellations. It also will help you learn the shapes of the constellations and their names. Who named the constellations? Thousands of years ago, stargazers noticed that some groups of stars seem to, be, seem to form a pattern in the sky. If you use your imagination, you may be able to see the shape of a water dipper or a soup ladle in one of the groups of stars below. Right here, the, have you heard of the Big Dipper? Well, that's what we're talking about, the Big Dipper right here. 
early, oh, Mm. Oh, yes, there we are. Sorry, I lost my place. Early stargazers imagined that some of the constellations formed shapes that looked like people or animals. The Greeks and Romans named the constellations after the heroes and the stories of their gods and goddesses. Even though the shape of each constellation does not look exactly like the person or animal it is named for, the names of constellations were passed on from generation to generation, and we still use those names today. What is a star? If you don't know, a star is a ball of hot glowing gases. The sun is a star, the closest one to Earth. All the other stars are much farther away. The sun is about 93 million miles away from Earth. After the sun, the nearest star is almost 26 trillion miles away. That's so far. Can you believe we can see that from here? That's crazy, right? That's how you know they're burning brilliantly out in outer space. Yeah, definitely. There are stars in the sky during the day, but we can't see them because the sky is too light. When the sun sets and the sky gets darker, the other stars seem to come out. But there are always stars in the sky, whether we can see them or not. Do you sometimes see the moon in the sky at night in the daytime? I know I have quite a few times. It's kind of the same idea. I think because the moon is so much bigger and closer, of course, because it's right outside our atmosphere, um, that we can see it during the daytime, whereas we can't see the stars, right? Totally. How bright a star looks to us depends on how much light it gives off and how near it is to Earth. The brightest star in the night sky is Sirius. It can be seen in winter near the constellation Orion. How do we know where to look to find certain con a certain constellation? Astronomers, scientists who study the stars, that's what an astronomer is, a scientist who studies the stars, know that constellations seem to move in the same paths across the night sky, night after night, year after year. We all know from experience when the sun rises in the eastern sky every morning and it sets in the western sky every night. We do know that. Astronomers know from experience when a constellation will rise and when it will set. They have drawn maps of the sky to show us when and where to look when we want to find certain stars. The sky maps at the front of this and front and back of this book will show you which constellations you can see in the early evening during each season of the year. Why do we see different constellations in the sky at different times of the year is the question. The, the answer is, the sun and the stars seem to move across the sky, but they are not really moving. We are moving. The earth is always spinning around like a top, and at the same time, it is moving in a path around the sun. It takes one year for the earth to travel around the sun. As the year goes on and the earth's position changes, the early evening positions of the constellations change too. Some constellations, such as Orion, rise and set and can be seen only part of the year. Other constellations, like the Big Dipper, can be seen all year long, but their positions in the sky change as the year goes on. And here's an example of that right there at the bottom. Can you see how it changes throughout the year? Pretty cool, right? How to use this book. Here we go. It's great when a nonfiction book tells you how to use it. It's great. In each of the sky pictures on the following pages, one constellation is printed in a special glow-in-the-dark ink. Look at the diagram on the constellation. Can you find, the, find that constellation in the starry sky of the picture? To see if you are correct, hold the picture under a bright light, then take this book into a dark room. The stars of the constellation will glow so that, it, that you can see what the constellation looks like and where it is in the night sky. Okay, now I know. I will try that later. I'll put it on Instagram for sure. When you go stargazing, beginners will enjoy stargazing most on nights when the sky is very clear, like tonight, and there is no moon. I don't know if a moon will be out tonight. We'll have to see. Before you go out, choose a constellation from the following pages and try the activity to help you learn its shape. You may want to take along this book and a flashlight when you go stargazing. It's easy to find constellations in the sky when you know their shapes and where to look for them. When you see a constellation for the first time, you may be surprised at how big it is and how much it looks like the shape in your book. Once you learn to find a constellation in the sky, you'll be able to find it again and again. This is true. One of my favorite ones, and we've already mentioned it in here, to find is Orion because I always find that constellation because of the three dots that make up his belt. And I've actually been doing that since I was in sixth grade when I went to SciCon Science Camp. That was really, really fun. I like that place a lot. Um, I don't know if it's still open, but I know Pyle doesn't go to that one. But I didn't go to school in Fresno Unified. More on that later. All right, here we go. Um, 
But remember, you won't be able to find all the constellations all of the time. This book includes some winter, spring, summer, and autumn constellations. And here's the stargazer's equipment. You might want a blanket, flashlight, backpack, water, of course. And this book is what they're recommending. Sounds about right. All right, here we go. So now we're going to talk about constellations. Year-round constellations. Ursa Major is the real name of the Big Dipper. Oh, sorry. Actually, Ursa Major is the one that goes around the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper can be found within it. I'm sorry about that. Let's keep going. The story of Ursa Major, the Great Bear. Hera, the queen of the gods, was very jealous of a beautiful young woman named Callisto. Her plot... Sorry, Hera plotted to hurt Callisto. But Zeus, the king of the gods, changed Callisto into a bear to keep her safe. The constellation Ursa Major and the Big Dipper. Ursa Major is made up of many stars, and it is not easy to find the whole constellation. Ursa Major is important to beginning stargazers, however, because it contains one of the most visible star groups in the sky, the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper is made up of seven stars that seem to form the shape of a ladle, or a dipper, such as you might use to serve soup. The three stars that form the handle of the dipper also come from the long tail of the Great Bear. The picture shows the Big Dipper seven stars connected by imaginary lines to make the shape of a dipper. The Big Dipper is one of the easiest star groups to recognize, but its position in the sky changes according to the season. Before you go outside to look for the Big Dipper, find the northern sky map for the season of the year you are in. Now, if it's winter, look at the northern sky. Find the Big Dipper on the sky map and look at its position. Is the Big Dipper high or low in the sky? Does the handle point up or down? See, this is a great way to great way to see which time of year you're in and where you can find it in the sky. It's pretty awesome. All right, Ursa Minor, which is a small version. Ursa means bigger. I'm sorry. No, it doesn't. Oh my word, Parker. Okay, major obviously means bigger and minor means smaller. So let's keep going. Ursa Minor and the Little Dipper. The story of Ursa Minor, the small bear. Callisto's son Arcus was hunting one day when he saw a large bear. The bear was really Callisto. Zeus didn't want Arcus to shoot his own mother, so he changed Arcus into a small bear. Just as a small bear can be found near his mother, Ursa Minor can be found in the sky near Ursa Major. The constellation Ursa Minor and the Little Dipper. The early stargazers saw the eight stars of the Ursa Minor as the shape of a long-tailed bear smaller than Ursa Major. Today we think Ursa Minor is as the constellation that contains the Little Dipper, a star group which looks like the Big Dipper but is smaller and not as bright. At the end of the li little, dip little Dipper's handle is Polaris, the North Star. That's cool to know. We're always looking for the North Star. This is the only star that doesn't seem to move at all. It remain, remains over the North Pole and always shows which direction is north. For thousands of years, Polaris has helped travelers to navigate. The Big Dipper and Little Dipper appear to move in a circle around Polaris. Before you go outside to look for these stars, check the northern sky map for the season of the year you are in now. Is the Big Dipper above or below Polaris? Is the Little Dipper to the left or to the right? Notice that the handles of the two dippers point in the opposite direction. Interesting. So I'm going to skip the ones that we are not currently seeing. So Leo the Lion is the next one we're going to read about. Spring Constellations. The story of Leo. Leo the Lion was strong and fierce and he was called the King of Beasts. His powerful roar made animals and people tremble when they heard it. His hide was so tough that arrows could not pierce it. Although many hunters tried, none was able to kill him. Hercules, a hero known for his strength, set out to kill Leo. He shot arrow after arrow, but they just bounced off his hide. Finally, Hercules took hold of Leo and killed him with his bare hands. Oh my gosh. For many years, people told the story of the fierce lion. They named this constellation for Leo because the stars form the shape of the lion. The constellation Leo. Leo is easy to find because it includes a very distinctive star group called sickle. A sickle is a curved knife used for cutting grain and grasses. So it kind of makes this shape, right? Yeah. The star group known as the sickle is formed by six stars. It looks like a backward question mark. At the bottom of the sickle is Regulus, a large bright star. When you look for the constellation Leo, think of curved Think of the curved part of the sickle as the lion's head. See right here. Do you see that? Yeah, it makes that curve. Regulus is on the lion's chest and the star Denebula 
the nebula maybe is at the tip of the lion's tail so cool and the last one we're going to read about is Virgo, the maiden. The story of Virgo. In the olden days, people lived in peace on earth. But as time went on, people began to do to fight wars. Astrea, the goddess of justice, moved from place to place, hoping to find peace again. She found unhappiness everywhere, so Astrea went to live in the heavens. She carried with her a stalk of wheat, which broke and scattered grains across the sky. These grains of wheat became stars. Astrea was also known as the Maiden, or Virgo. Legend says that only people who love peace and justice can see the stars of Virgo. Oh, see her shape right there? Pretty cool, right? The constellation Virgo. Virgo can sit, contains seven main stars. The most visible star in the group is bright is the white, sorry, bright white star named Spica, which means spike of grain. So I bet you it's Spica. All right, let's keep going. Higher in the sky, a bit to the right of Virgo, is the star Denebola. Denebola. Yeah, that's what, look, that, that's the other thing I like about nonfiction books is they give you pronunciations of harder words in there. It's very nice. Which forms the lion's tail in the constellation Leo? Higher than Virgo and a bit to the left is the very bright star Arct Arcturus. Yes, Arcturus, Denebola, and Spica form the star group called Virgo Triangle. Before you go out to look for Virgo in the sky, try drawing Virgo seven stars with Arcturus and Denebola above them. When you can draw Virgo without looking at the book, then you know it's shaped well enough to find Virgo in the sky. Pretty cool. I have always been a big fan, um, and we're gonna stop there because um, those are the ones we can see right now. And if there's any, well, there's some coming up as well. Um, but I feel like my video is getting quite long today. So um, I will talk more about this later during my live craft time at four o'clock. Um, but I have always loved the night sky. And I actually, before I became a librarian, I used to teach in a, at, at a school, at an elementary school, a science lab. And one of the cool projects we did, we focused on um, constellations in the night sky as part of our unit. And we made these really cool pyramid papers where we basically made it like a giant diorama out of a giant square. And we put constellations on there. Um, we drew them from the science book. And then we very carefully poked holes where all the uh, major stars were. And if you held it up to the light, you could see all the constellations shining through. It was a really cool project. And then we also did a camp out that year um, based on stargazing and constellations. And it was a very scientifically based uh, camp out for us. And we did it at the school, but it was out in the country. So it made it very easy to uh, take a look at the stars out there. But it was super cool. What do you guys like about the night sky? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you care? Do you not care? And that's okay. We all have different interests. Um, and if that's not one of yours, no big. Um, but anyway, I'm going to be uh, heading out of here because I have craft time, art from afar, coming up very shortly. And then I'm going to post a challenge for us uh, for our last day of library week. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I am Miss Parker. I miss you all dearly. I'm so glad you're here for story time. And I will see you next Monday for a whole new story. Bye, everybody. Have a great weekend.